We finished with the routing, the grinding, the smoothing, and now it's time to do a little bit of sanding and varnishing and sanding and varnishing and sanding and varnishing and varnishing and varnishing and varnishing. That's coming up right now. Alright, so this on I don't think I need the goggles, it's more uh, it's a finishing sander. It's got a couple of settings on it, I think. No, it's on off. I thought it might be an orbital. Just a finishing sander. It is an orbital. And there's uh, another choices on it. So what I want to do is use this, uh, I'm using 220 grit. This takes a one-third sheet, so um, here. I'm gonna get off my wood because I'm gonna cut on this thing. Mark here. And mark here. And fold it. No, so I'm not cutting this on my piece. And I'm also not too worried about making it perfect. As you can see, I've got a nice little airfoil shape. Uh, there's a crack there, but I don't think that's going to affect performance once I put some uh, uh, cover this well nice and smooth. Okay, so I think the sanding part um, is for the most part done. Uh, <laughs> got to take this piece off and maybe sand the bottom of this down and maybe give it a shape, but. Uh, um, it looks good. All right, the uh, enemy of paintbrushes are, of course, dust and bugs, and so I've decided to do this in my shop. So I have some varnish here, which is the only thing I'm going to use. I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to stain this. I'm just going to varnish it. Right there. Alright. This is the first coat. Trying not to touch it because my, my hands have oils in them. Um, 
it's there a lot of sawdust in my hands so that will help a lot um, keeping the oils off of this board See, this wood is really sucking up the varnish. Back down here. I'm going this into the light so I can see it because it's telling me spots that could use just a little bit more. Okay, so a little trick. If you know you're going to use the same paintbrush again several consecutive days, you can just take it, just take it and stick it inside of a, a plastic bag. Don't crush it up or anything, and then just twist it around like that. And that will keep the, uh, that'll keep the varnish, in this case the varnish, dry. If you want, you can have a little piece of wire around it like that. And as long as it stays away from your piece, you're ready to go the next day. So we're going to give this stuff a chance to, uh, to dry. And then, uh, so we're going to let this give this a chance to dry and then uh, we're going to come back in tomorrow so I remember to put the uh, okay so we're ready for the second coat we're just uh, taking a look at this and it feels a little bit sticky and it looks like the uh, the wood has absorbed a lot of the uh, can you see dry spots here um, the wood has absorbed a lot of the varnish and there's some sticky spots so I'm going to throw a little bit more varnish on this real quick okay, I got the brush got the varnish here the brush is still inside the bag still a little bit wet okay the last time I think I started up around uh, now the, I've got this thing going to the axle here. Uh, as you can see that I've got this thing going to the axle, and that's so that I can hold on to it and without having to touch it. Yeah, the wood really sucked up the varnish in here. Most people, I'm pretty sure, know how to paint. Notice you, I mean, know that you need to do smooth single strokes, and it doesn't matter whether you're going up or down. I mean, the brush is a single stroke and then lift and then go back. You can go back and forth, but each stroke you're lifting the brush to make sure you're not on it a second time. Okay, this is a second cup. Number two. That's oh. it. So, yeah, from, from the and the second thing I've decided to do is bring it in the house. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lot of varnish right over here. I think this brush is probably used up its so now the last one I did was this side and it's dried overnight so let's see what that looks like and uh, oops 
I got some 220 grit and uh, just hand rub it. Seems to, to work just fine. I got some spots here and there. I'm not going to go over this whole thing. I'm, this is a rudder. It's going to be in the water. So, you know, we're just putting a bunch of varnish on it. I don't want to put paint on this. Oh, I felt a spot over here. Maybe a spot over here. Okay, so that's uh, okay. All right. So let's see how that looks. Like. What I'm doing right now is um, doing some parchment paper that I'm going to wrap around these two pieces of wood here. And these two pieces of wood are the um, piece that I'm going to set this uh, varnished bit of wood on top of while I'm working with it. It catches, it's um, really slick stuff, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the, the tape. I, know, I don't think I will be able to get the tape to stick to it. I'm going to try and I'll try. Try and get it started on this tape. This tape just doesn't like the stick. To parchment paper. So, let's see what that does. Alright, so it's got a hole. There we go. The purpose of the parchment paper is to have something that the uh, varnish, the drying varnish, isn't going to stick to. I'm going to take the ends of this. Tape won't stick to the paper, but it should stick to itself. The main idea here is to just keep the, this from coming off. So this will be parchment paper that uh, that I set the wood on top of, but I want to set on top of the uh, tape. I'm going to mark tape. And that says don't set the varnish here. So um, I've already varnished this a couple of times and um, saw a couple other um, videos on YouTube and I'll post a I'll post a, a link to the ones that I think are interesting on this because there's a, a lot to varnishing. But uh, we are varnishing a rudder which is going to go into water and the sole purpose of the varnish in this case is not to make the rudder look good but to uh, protect it from water intrusion into the wood. And so we're going to be less concerned about appearance, although we will be a little bit concerned about appearance because it is a, a, a beautiful piece of wood. Man. I, I see all these other guys use these big electric sanders. I'm not going to do that. What I've done is I've taken some 220 grit used and I've just gone over places where I found bubbles. And I do that with my hand. And after the last bit. See now here's here's the um, oh, wow, sorry. Here's the um, here's the other side that we did uh, last time and it did have some bubbles. And um, let's see again I'm gonna just rub my hand across here. This isn't a tabletop. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put this on here. I'm gonna work this just in I know some guys will come in and they go, mm. and like, mm. real slow like, I like, you know, heck with it. Just put that stuff on me. I need a heavy coat of varnish on this thing. I need a monster coat. Um, I need more monster coats. I need as much varnish on this monster as I can get. Here is the old. Here's the old rudder, and I probably put 10, 15 coats on this one, and you might be able to see some of the, there are, 
there are, I mean, I never stopped once to sand this thing down. As you can see, there are lots of drips along here. The, um, the sole purpose of putting the varnish on here was just to keep it dry or protect it from water intrusion. But All right, so the last time we were having some difficulty with, um, with excess uh, with excess drippage. And actually, I painted, I got aggressive on the other side of this, uh, and I put too much, uh, I put way too much varnish on it, it dripped over the edge, and just started creating a bunch of little, um, what I'd call them zits on this, the other side, and I shaved a lot of them down. And a lot of them you just take off with this little, as you can see here, I can still trim this down a little bit. Dust. Or drop off. All right. That's it for today. Thanks for watching my program. If you like my videos, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for an organized listing of my YouTube videos, go to my website, www.wherearemyplacebos.com, and click on videos. Have a great day.